Welcome back to Empowerment Nursing. I'm Ashley and we're gonna do a test question this week that involves intracranial pressures. If you were lucky enough to catch our Facebook Live this week, we talked about intracranial pressure in great detail and the three things that come together to combine um, to create intracranial pressures and the nursing safety around that. That will help you get to the right answer of this question, so I invite you to find that on our Facebook page. So this week our question is, a patient underwent a craniotomy 12 hours ago and the nurse plans to maintain intracranial pressure within the normal range. What should the nurse include in the plan of care? Select all that applies. So let's reword that into something more simple. The very first thing you should do with select all that apply questions. The real question is asking, which of the following five things would you do if a patient had intracranial pressure increases, okay? So let's go through our five options. Number one, encourage deep breathing and coughing. Number two, elevate the head of the bed to 15 to 20 degrees. Number three, contact the healthcare provider if intracranial pressure is above 15 millimeters of mercury. Option four, monitor neurological status using the Glasgow Coma Scale. And number five, complete active range of motion exercises. So if you know about intracranial pressure and you understand the nursing safety around that, these options are pretty obvious. So we ask ourselves again, which one of the following five things will we do for our patient with increased intracranial pressure? Number one, will we encourage deep breathing and coughing? Absolutely not. Deep breathing, coughing, and suctioning are all things that increase intracranial pressure that we do as little as possible. With a patient with increased intracranial pressure, we are not going to choose number one. Number two, elevate the head of the bed to 15 to 20 degrees. We are absolutely going to do that because when you increase the head of the bed, it takes the blood perfusion out of the head and decreases the blood perfusion to the brain. Blood is one of the things that increases intracranial pressures, so that will naturally decrease the intracranial pressure. You would never want to lay an intracranial patient um, with increased pressures flat, so we're definitely going to choose number two. Number three, contact the healthcare provider if the intracranial pressure goes above 50 millimeters of mercury. Yes, you would. To get that answer correct, you would have to know that the normal for intracranial pressure is between zero to 15 millimeters of mercury. So again, memorizing those lab values that we have in our cue cards. So we are going to choose number three. Number four, monitor neurological status using the Glasgow Coma Scale. Yes, absolutely. The Glasgow Coma Scale is the number one assessment of neurological functioning. So we are definitely going to be monitoring the Glasgow Coma Scale as a level of consciousness on this patient. We are going to choose number four. Number five, complete active range of motion exercises. Absolutely not. Intracranial patients with increased pressures are moved as little as possible. In fact, we barely even reposition them if we can avoid it because any interaction and any movement will increase intracranial pressure. So we're definitely not going to be completing active range of motion exercises. Therefore, our correct answer of what we would include in the plan of care for our patient with increased intracranial pressure are two, three, and four. So for the answers to this question and more, you can check out our complete study package. And thank you for joining me. Bye for now.